Hey, it's Mr. Tosh over at Global, and we're going to take a look at Asperger's Syndrome, because that certainly has something to do with Christopher and, and who he is and how he behaves in this novel. So let's take a quick look at what that is so you can get going on your How is Christopher Like These Famous People project. So the elevator description, meaning the very short uh, description of what it is, it's three impairments, a triad is three impairments. They affect social interaction, communication, and imagination. And then they, they like rigid, repetitive patterns of activities. These are the common things that you're going to see in that. Now, what it is, it's a disorder that is on the autism spectrum. Autism is a spectrum of things, so not every autistic student is the same. Autistic adult is the same. Uh, there's a whole spectrum of, of ways that autism manifests itself. And a gentleman named Asperger, Hans Asperger, wrote this in Autistic Psychopathy in 1944. So this is an older disease or an older disorder. And unfortunately, it was relatively ignored until 1981. Um, and then it wasn't even until 1994 that it made the, uh, the cat, which is the book that psychologists and psychiatrists use to call something a, a psychiatric and intellectual disorder, um, so it didn't make it to the book until 1994. So even though it was diagnosed 50 years earlier, it really only became regular in 1994. Now, it can cause restriction to normal function in things like communication and socialization and imagination. And you see the way that Haddon wrote this character. It's doing all of that. The ability to behave and think with, with any kind of flexibility. And of course, it does affect physical coordination too. Um, you don't see a ton of that, but you do see some of that with, with Christopher as well. Now, when it affects communication, what happens is it it affects speech, intonation, facial expression, gesture, and other body language. It's amazing how much uh, that informs how we understand what other people tell us. It does really restrict the thought process. So there is a what we would consider a lack of imagination, but because they are so specifically um, resistant to change and obsessive they get into very ritualistic routine behavior uh, because of that uh, there is some rigidity in there and that imagination is known for a lack of rigidity now socialization that's also a big deal with kids who have autism very difficult time maintaining social relationships they have very poor social timing because they're usually extremely blunt um, which is sometimes considered rude but they're of course just seeing themselves as being honest there's a lack of empathy, too. They can see something terrible um, and not necessarily feel or respond the way you and I would. Um, and a lot of times, eye contact is inappropriate. And when we say inappropriate eye contact, uh, we don't mean anything salacious or anything bad. What we're really talking about is eye contact is often... Um, you know, they're looking at the wrong place, they're looking at the floor, they can't actually look at you. A lot of times that's what happens with Asperger's uh, people. Now, to diagnose it, it, it is like autism, it is present from birth, um, but usually the early symptoms aren't noticed the way they are in a lot of other forms of autism until there's warning bells. And that, you know, talking about socialization, rigid thought, things like that. Well, normally between two and three, you start to see autism. With Asperger's, you might see it later because a lot of the warning bells don't happen until they don't meet social and emotional goals that would be associated with older children. So they might not see it. You might see it between two and three, but you might see it later. But more often they are diagnosed between five and seven because they said those social cues like how to look at people how to socialize and the fact that they can't do it correctly is often not manifest until they're five or six or seven and they're not doing what they should be doing at that age and then the specific criteria for diagnosis is still unclear that means it's an elimination disease often i've I heard it called one one social worker told me that the elimination disease <laughs> is how you, you find Asperger's. Well, it's not this, and it's not this, and it's not this, so it must be Asperger's. You can't give a specific test to see whether or not it's Asperger's. Now, it affects both males and females, but I've actually never met a female with Asperger's, and all the people with Asperger's I've met are male. Uh, it's in two per 10,000, so if you think about these kinds of disorders, that may seem relatively low, but it, it's, it's a pretty high number when you think about the kinds of life-changing 
uh, disabilities. Now, the first thing you're going to see is a uh, limited range of interest and a lack of flexibility, meaning they're just very rigid in their thinking, very rigid in what they have to do. Um, they Not only do they not like change, they're very co comfortable in their routines. And if there is change brought in, anxiety is a big deal. They often feel very badly about themselves. They're very afraid of failure. They're very afraid of being misunderstood and of not understanding others, which is also very challenging because you combine that with poor social skills, and that makes communication for these people very challenging. Um, they also don't get the normal social behaviors that you and I understand perfectly well. We're very comfortable with certain social behaviors, and these kids don't get it. Um, there are sometimes disruptive behaviors. Um, remember in the text that we talked about that he talked about doing groaning, uh, you'll see a lot of these, they're also called stimming behaviors. They're meant to kind of reset the um, senses so that the student or the individual can kind of reset themselves uh, physically and emotionally to be able to deal with life because so much of life is flexible and so much of Asperger's is not. Um, they are not often noticed as you know, Asperger's, Asperger's syndrome people, or they're often called Aspies, by the way. Um, you'll hear that as a, as a colloquialism. It's not necessarily a rude term, um, but I wouldn't call, use it unless you were told to. But an Asperger's syndrome patient, you often don't pick it up till they're in secondary school, meaning you know, eighth grade sometimes. In ninth grade, they pick it up. So even though it's between five and seven diagnosed, it may not be till much later. And the other reason it happens is everybody goes to school when they're young. And kids with Asperger's students, or with Asperger's syndrome rather, are often at the top of their class. They're, they're not even uh, struggling academically until they have to do things like analyze subtle cues in literature or analyze film and things like that, which you and I can, or typical people can do rather easily. But when you have Asperger's syndrome, that's a much harder thing to do. Now, social relationships, very hard to work with because you'll see Christopher is extremely blunt and we're never as blunt as Christopher is. And that's because they, they, have don't, they don't have a sense of timing. They don't relate to body language. So tone of voice and things like that are not going to register with them. You'll see oftentimes that Christopher gets scared when his father loses his temper or when people do things and he just doesn't understand it. And it's not that he gets scared in the way that you and I might react to someone whose anger is making us feel uncomfortable. He literally does not understand what's going on <clears throat> at all. So there's also a lack of empathy. And that doesn't mean they're unfeeling people. It's that if something terrible were to happen in front of them or if somebody was particularly upset, you and I would immediately, or typical people would immediately relate in that sense of, okay, I know what it's like to feel upset. This person does not even register that. So it's not that they don't care, it's that they don't have kind of a caring gene in them in that regard to connect the same way. Um, and it doesn't mean they don't care about people. It just means they don't pick up the cues to be empathetic the way you and uh, typical people are. And they often use inappropriate eye contact, which means the eyes are kind of staring in a wrong direction. Um, and and it's, that's what we mean by inappropriate eye contact and not looking where Normally, people would look in a conversation, you'll have a conversation with an Asperger's person, and they might be staring off, they might be staring off to the side, they might be staring at, at your shoes, they, they won't be staring at you or making eye contact the way a typical person would in a conversation. Now, the other thing to notice, by the way, they have uh, extraordinarily high intelligence. A lot of Asperger's uh, patients have exceptionally high intelligence, uh, and that's common. And because they have pretty normal, if not better than average verbal skills, they ha they rely on literal meanings, literal definitions. They can't read body language. They can't read facial expressions. If you're not sure you want to hear something, they won't know if you're sounding uh, unsure of yourself. They won't read any of that. You have to be very explicit. And then, of course, Clumsiness, too, is a big part of it uh, because they can't necessarily, they don't have necessarily the same motor control that typical folks do. Now, there's good and bad. People with Asperger's syndrome are very honest, they're very determined. 
there's usually something that they do that is off the rails really really good um, sometimes more than one thing that they're brilliant at quite gifted um, often very kind um, and I've had that experience with students I've had in the past for decades with Asperger's um, just good souls uh, they do speak their mind you'll always know what they mean and what they feel because they'll just lay it out there they like to be alone they don't have a problem with being alone and because they're on the autism spectrum they notice everything and it's all the same they don't even regulate the background noise with the noise in the parking lot with the teacher talking in front of the room it's all the same and they pick up all of it they have challenges making friends so if you know someone with asperger's syndrome you have to come to them on the other hand you'll never have someone better to help you with the thing they're gifted at um, but you're going to have to understand that it's hard for them to make friends manage feelings Taking advice is very difficult because that means change. Handwriting is usually very difficult because handwriting is fine motor. Um, they are often teased or bullied because they're socially unusual, and so they're targets. Um, and we kind of expect our friends to be friends, and it's hard for kids with Asperger's to know that. And when it may seem obvious that you are upset or you are happy or feeling a certain way, Asperger's people don't necessarily pick up the body cues and the social cues to um, to be able to do that. And finally, um, just so you know, a lot of if you have Asperger's, you can be extremely famous. Albert Einstein's really he lived and did most of his work before Asperger's was commonly known, but he's very commonly thought to have had Asperger's. Sir Isaac Newton, Napoleon, Leonardo da Vinci, Elvis Presley, Hans Christian Andersen is the author. Bill Gates. Uh, if you ever watch him work, you, if you ever watch a TED Talk by Bill Gates, you can see he's a brilliant man, but seems to have a lot of those um, those traits. Satoshi uh, Tajiri, and uh, he who invented Pokemon. And another one I, I often throw out there is Steve Jobs, who invented the Apple computer and the Apple Enterprise. So these are all the things that are common for people who have Asperger's. And um, you know, or rather, these are all famous people who are thought to have had Asperger's. Now, I hope that gives you some understanding of Asperger's syndrome, and uh, that'll help you be able to do your project. Thank you for watching.